Friday, mate. Happy Friday. There. Fridays are always happy. Yeah. Oh, right. More BMW and oil jets, mate. Nice. For this little puppy over here. Oh, yeah. How's that one getting on? You just stripped it down, have you? Stripped it all down. Any disasters? Or? Not too bad, this one. Ideal. Apparently, a couple of lads own it in a... I think it's in a Sierra. Not sure. Four-wheel drive. Um, been running for about five years. At a peak, 600 horsepower. Bloody hell. I know. Good going, that. Um, so the reason it come apart is because they put... They religiously look after it. They service it well. They put a new Gates timing belt on it. It's and guess what's happened? Clang up. Apparently, old stock cam belt oh, got a bit perishy no. ripped six teeth off it and bent all the valves oh dear mm. so they took the cylinder head off it um which i think is in the other room and um yeah bent the valves mate but they said looking at it obviously the block face is a bit a little bit not iffy. wonderful well it's but Been running out that. it's got the long stud conversion, the old long stud set up. Um, so we're going to have to do a bit of modification on this. Got bits everywhere here, haven't we? Um, so we've got the old style studs, which are these. Yeah. These are the old Burton ones. So they which, have the, the seal on there, is that right? They have the seal on there, yeah. Um, these are okay, but what, you've, what we've found is you have to, especially on the opposite side to the oil way, we have to go deeper. So if we put the, we drill and tap five mil deeper, yeah. go another five mil deeper on the 17 mil um, counter, counter bore, and then they will sit a bit deeper because on yeah. this side, especially on these two here, we've got that lug in the block. You've heard me say that before. Yeah. So these have been running, what, about seven, eight threads in the block. Right, and although yeah, it's so been okay, hasn't created any issues, it can do. It can just up, either it can just rip those lugs out the bottom of the block. We've never seen it rip the threads out, so it's probably more than enough threads. But just belt and braces, we go another five mil deeper. Yeah. So obviously, because they don't know the history of these studs, we're going to replace them. So I've replaced them with the Julian Godfrey ones, which are just a straight stud. So these have not got the seventeen mil in the middle there. Um, if I can get these out. These are the ones I tend to use. And then what you do, you just put them to your own depth. And then you've got a blue washer that sits over the top, like an, a, a rubber washer, and right, sits yeah. in that groove there. So, so that, that, that's what seals it then? That that's what seals it, there. yeah. Um, stops the water coming up to the head gasket, basically. So, yeah, it's on a standard bore, mate. Never, yeah, been, ooh, never ooh. been faced, original face. Doesn't feel too lippy either, then, boys. No, it's pretty good. Um, so it's on aftermarket management. That's probably why we haven't got any bore wear there. Oh, um, right. But we're going to bore it 0.5, face it, mod the long studs, and um, the block's pretty good, really. The, the crank is standard, standard. Yeah. Um, but we're going to... I think John's polished it. I think so. Um, I'm, so I'm about to balance it. So. Yeah, so what we're going to do is stick it in the block, check the running clearances, and if it's okay, we'll leave it. If I not, do. we will grind it. So I'm going to do the what I did on this one. Put the BMW all jets in there, and um, yeah, pretty standard stuff, really. Just so a, a fairly, just a fairly standard build, then. Yeah, just, just like a refresh, a, mate. Yeah. Um, com rods are good. We're going to use those. They were going to go for aftermarket rods, but we can't get the. We're going to go for a long rod, short piston setup. Oh right. We can't get the pistons in half a mil. We can only get them in one mil at the minute. We don't want to take this out to one mil. No. Either. So I'm going to use the standard pistons and sort them rods. Nice. Yeah. So. Pretty good, really, considering it's been running that power for umpteen years, isn't it? Been running a beefy clutch, isn't it? Yeah, the uh, the clutch has seen better days, yeah. so we'll have to face a flywheel and and all that. Um, but this one over here, mate, we've just to say I've got the bottom end together on this, all looking good, isn't it? Yeah, it looks lovely that. So I'm just about to sort the head. Apparently, the head has all been gone through. Now he hasn't used this head before. He got it with the car, um, and it's all been gone through. So he said, just strip it out, check it, clean it, and make sure it all has been done. Yeah. So I've done that. It has got new guides. The guide, there's no guide where it's, it's been done really well, actually. They've cut the seats and lapped them, face the head. I haven't even got to do that. But this is a reason, mate, why 
you should remove all the gallery plugs yep. and check because if they were going to chuck this on, we've took the oil gallery plugs out the end. But before I show you that cylinder head, moving on quickly to the thumbnail and title, we've had a complainer, mate. Have we? We've had court threats. Really? Oh, yes. Bloody hell. So, the whole point of doing this little bit here is what the threats, the court threats are actually about. It's, it's about basically machining engine parts that aren't meant to be machined. And when I say that, I mean not meant to be machined as in what the manufacturers would recommend. So for so like mods and mods, yeah. uprated purposes. Um, what this particular threat is about um, is a block that we did actually quite a long time ago, um, although apparently it hasn't done much work, but it's an aluminium Honda block that we put ductile iron liners in. Oh, right. Um, yeah, so you know that I put ductile iron liners in a lot of stuff. Um, the aluminium blocks in particular, they seem to be, they seem to have different liners in there, different line of fitment. So some yeah. will have a, a cast in cast iron liner, some will have a pressed in liner, um, some will have an aliasil bore, something like that. Um, so when we bore them out and put a ductile iron top hat liner in, really it's only by knowing the clearances and the, the, the way that heat affects it, um, you can sort of know, and experience by having done them, mm. you can sort of tell what it's going to do really, but you're not, it's not really meant to be machined for that, do you know what I mean? No, yeah. It's... So what's happened to this one is he said that the liners have distorted and caused a smoking issue. Um, oh, right. But we all know whatever these things are used for, you don't know, that you don't know who's mapped them, how they've been mapped. Mm. Um, so it's one of them really, that's why Definitely in the last year or so, we've put down on the invoice that anything like this, it's not a, I suppose it is a get out clause of, on the warranty, but um, anything that is machined outside a manufacturer's recommendations is, yeah. you know, you can't really warrant it, can oh, you? Oh, no, you can't. Um, perfect example is these cosy blocks. So if we take this block, for instance, we all know that most of these, nearly every one of these 200 blocks that we use, you can't do the 205 blocks, but all of the 200 blocks that we do, we build ourselves. Yeah. And we've had plenty of them come in for customers wanting them done. Um, we do a long stud conversion. So what that means is drilling out the top of the thread through into the water jacket, except for these two, which don't go into water jacket. Um, they're just a blank hole because you've got an oil way next to one of them. Oh, you right. go through and you drill down into the base of the block. Now, the 200 block has got enough meat to put a thread in down into the base. Um, from my experience, all of the castings seem to be a bit different. Um, so the depths at what you do them is an unknown. Um, the studs seem to vary. So if I take this stud, for example, which is a, a Julian Godfrey stud that we tend to use, They've got less threads on the base than the old uh, Burton studs, okay? Right. How many, I mean, the way threads work is not like you think. So having twice as many threads into the block wouldn't halve the amount of load on the other threads. It's, it's a percentage. So yeah. you don't gain a great deal by having another three or four threads, basically. Right. Um, We've had these in at sort of seven, eight threads and they talk up 100 foot pound, no trouble. So these only have to go to 90. Yeah. Um, so the depth is a, it's an unknown. So really, it's only by sort of experience of knowing what works is how, how to do them. But if they fail, yeah. it's, you know, it's an unknown, isn't it? It's a little bit the same as the 205 blocks. They're renowned for cracking on the top. Same as the 200s they crack on the top. It's because over time, the thread pulls up on the block and then eventually they crack into the waterway. That's why we long stood on. Yeah. If a 205 block does that, it's scrap. With the 200 block, we can go down to the base, but it, you ain't really meant to do it. But well, because no. people have been doing it for years, they tend to think that it's a, you know, it's um, Ford approved. a Ford yeah, approved, no. but it ain't, is it? No. So we can only do our best. Another thing we found with the 200 blocks, 
which a couple of people have said in the past about, and we've had it ourselves. One or two of these, down in the base of the block where the casting is, whether it's got to be something to do with the casting, but you'll have hard areas. You can normally see them where they're darker right, than the yeah. rest of the casting. And I've had it, particularly in this one here, for some reason, which is the front exhaust side, half of the hole down there that you're about to drill is hard in the oh, cast right. iron. So, so we all know that if you go to drill, I send an end mill down there first, but if you go to drill into half soft, half hard, it's going to go into the soft, isn't it? So yeah. it sort of goes off on the piss a bit and the stud comes up at a bit of an angle. And you, when you come to put the head on, you're about half, a st half the stud out. So you have to sort of manipulate it over. Nothing you can do about it. Um, before I started doing these, um, a company, well-known Cosworth specialist, used to do them for me, and they always had the same problem. And I, that's the reason I started to do them myself. But unfortunately, well, the thing is, I know now why. It's not like it's not like you're going down there with a handheld drill either. You're doing that on the mill. Yeah. That, and it's you know it's down here somewhere. You can't do anything if no. it starts drifting off. That's it. That's it, mate. You can't do anything to correct it. So. No. So, yeah, that was my point, really. As I say, this customer that's emailed me, giving these sort of threats, I've had to state back to him, if you have a look on your invoice, you know, it's one of them, really. And obviously, there's no proof of what has happened to this particular engine, but no. it ain't really meant to have them liners in. So we, we do our best. We do the clearances as correct as we can, but we don't know what's going to happen, really, do we? No. So there yeah. we go, mate. Back to that cylinder head on the Cosworth. And look at that. Ooh. You can't even see up on. No, you can't. Absolutely. It's the other end out, is it? Yeah, the other end's out. Oh my God, you can't see the light at the other end. Absolutely. Clagged right up with gack. So yeah, that's, that's what good. that's going to do. This oil gallery here runs um, from the head, feeds down there, and then feeds the hydraulics. So you probably end up with either noisy hydraulics or a hydraulic running dry in the head and ripping the thing to bits. So yeah, yeah, took all the valves out, going to give it a good clean and wire brush, etc. I'm not going to bother blasting it because obviously the head face yeah, has been yeah. done. So it's only add 30 thou off the head, which is good really for one of these, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's it, mate, on these two cozies. This one's all done. We had the gasket for the throttle body turn up yesterday. I do. So he's all done, ready to go. Yeah. Mate, he said that was great because he wanted it for the end of this month anyway. Beautiful engine, that. It's beautiful, isn't it? It looks spiffy now with all those plated bits on. Yeah. You've nearly done that A-series. On yeah. to the next in a minute. A-series is nearly done. Waiting for a rear seal and then I can pop the rocker cover on. Nice. And that one can go. John's just gone down the road to get a bit of welding done, isn't he? Bless him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had a little bit of a whoopsie yesterday, bless him. Yeah. Perfect example of why you can get a little bit complacent, although he's been doing it for probably 45 years or whatever. Well, we were talking about it the other day, weren't we? So Yeah, what he's done is he's, fortunately, it's not the most rarest and expensivest of heads, but he's um, here, when you engage the feeds, this left-hand one, you pull to engage and then press the yellow button and that means it will feed into the, uh, the head. But he's, I think he's done the middle one, hasn't he? Which is up. Up. And he's so fed, fed up, it up into the cutter. Which, uh, which has took the corner good. out. Sounded lovely. <laughs> Fortunately, he ain't gone too far over so we can weld that up. I think he's informed the customer and he's all right because it's a, yeah. it's a bit What's of an that old course of his own, I think. Is that a big V8 head? That's a V8 head. Yeah. One of two. That's massive, that. It's a beauty, isn't it? Big old car style. What is it then? I don't yeah. know what that's off. Probably a bloody boat or something. Yeah. Yeah. Beast of a Big head. old inlet valves, isn't they? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Christ. Yeah. So, what you got planned for the weekend then, mate? Not a lot, really. Um, trying to think. Not too much going on. Waiting for some news on the Subaru, but oh, I'm trying to be patient, so. I see you got it on your background there. Yeah, on your laptop, <laughs> it's on the background mate, on there. That. You bet you're excited, aren't you? Yeah, I am. It's the not knowing when you're going to get it back. 
That is, like, it is. It's like could be tomorrow. Could tension. be three or four weeks. Yeah. I know Chris has got a lot on. Yeah. And you said he's had to book it in now, and he really had and get the it thing in. done yeah. rather than sort of do it in between jobs. That ain't going to work when you're busy. No. I'm trying to be patient. It's just it's hard, isn't it? Because well, it of... is. But the only saving grace, unlike my BMW, as soon as you get it back, it's done, isn't it? Yeah. Any plans for it? Coilovers. First thing. The cheapest ones I can get. Get it on the deck. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe some wheels, but. They're know. the wheels. What does yeah. everyone think? I like them wheels. I like them. Up close, they, they probably could do with a little refurb, a light refurb. They're but, a nice, they are a nice wheel though. Yeah, they're 17s. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not sure what I'll do yet. The thing is, you've got to weigh it up, haven't you? Is this going to be. First of all, you've got to see if you like it. Mm. And we know that an Impreza is your dream, isn't it? It's the dream. Whether it might be a bit of a never meet your heroes type situation, I don't know, but. Well, it's, you ain't going to know until you've had one one day. I've got to have one. That's the up one. and down of it. I've got so my feeling one. is, all right, stick some cheap coilovers on, get it so you can put it at the height you want it, but you don't want to chuck too much money at it that you're going to lose a lot, do you? Because no, at the minute, yeah. I would say the whole thing's still going to owe you less than what it's worth, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. Um, they're pretty sought after now, especially here. And yeah. It's a bit of a rare one, the, isn't it? The only thing with... Yeah, it's fairly rare. It's a, I think it's a, a spec B, which I thought it wasn't. means but nothing to me. It's like the slightly... It's one step away from being the STI. I Is don't it? know. I think so. Not sure. But, yeah, sort of... At the minute, the way it's going, it's going to cost about what I wanted it to cost. And if I start getting wheels and tyres and coilovers, it's like that's, that's adding thing. another like two grand to it. And that's it? the trouble, mate. Yeah, you know, and you're up, you're up. I would say you're up there with fairly decent money towards a Subaru, aren't you? Yeah, no, definitely. A if you good get a Subaru, point. we we all know that there's a load of sheds out there. A lot of them. A lot of sheds. So I was you looking want to at a few last a night. One. It'd be quite a... cool. The thing is. Once upon a time, the old Impressas were, there was quite a few about, and they were all driven by... Yobbos. Yeah, yeah. I hate to say it. But now, quite a sought-after car. Oh, yeah. Don't see them, do you? No, you don't. Really? Barely ever. So I would say early 20s, mm. getting an Impreza, isn't it? I've seen, I was looking at P1s. Big money. 21 grand for one, not a sin. I would, Another I would have 40. thought there'd be more than that. There was one... A, Better example, it was 40. But I was just having a little browse. Serious money, innit, that? Yeah. Yeah, so I would, yeah, probably at the moment, mate, just get it, drive it around, see if you like it. You might not like it and think, no, this ain't what I want. Yeah. And then don't, don't chuck know. anything at it, innit? Because whoever's yeah. potentially going to want to buy that is going to want it like it is, I'd say, innit? Yeah, well, it's, other than having a built engine, it's all fairly stock. Although yeah. I think it's got an exhaust on it. Right. Because anyone that watched the video would know that I could fit my fist inside the exhaust <laughs> easily with like... Don't go fist in your exhaust, no, mate. Don't go fist it's not in a it, great, It's not a great start. No. Been there myself. <laughs> right, this, this Rover... Yeah. Probably thinking, why haven't we done anything with this yet? Uh, two reasons. One, the customer's gone away. And we've obviously, I've been trying to get these out the door. He's not in any major rush for this. Yeah. Um, the head, I've had a couple of V8s to, a couple of cranks to send to Charlie for balancing. Yeah. Um, so we have chucked the head in the box and Charlie at CTM is going to be porting this. Right. Um, because he's going to do me a bit of a favour. Obviously we've inundated with work, so it's quite time consuming the old porting. Yeah. So we'll let Charlie port that for us. It's going to be the same money anyway to the customer. Um, two other things, the customer sent me a link for a set of pistons and some trick rods. The pistons, I think, are CP. Right. Might be wrong there, which are fine. We can get them ordered. Um, but the rods are max speeding rods, hmm. which you and I both know. I've got good reviews on the old... No um, issues with them. No issues at all with the old max speeding rods. Put them in a few things, never had any issues. We've measured them. They're all good spec, aren't they, them things? Yeah. And very cheap. So the reason I'm waiting is because last year I thought, I'm sure I had an email off Max Speeding Rods saying, do I want to do a calibration in, in the videos? And they'll help me out with whatever they make. 
So I've emailed them back and said, look, do you want to sponsor us still? If so, send me a set of MG, um, MG rods. I and, do. Um, or K16 rods. I haven't heard back yet, but potentially we could get some money off for the customer. Yeah. And maybe get paid for reviewing them while we're building it. Yeah, that'd be ideal. Be ideal, wouldn't it? They seem a good company, really. They. Yeah, they're really they're good. good to say the, they're good for the enthusiast, aren't they? They're yeah. Cheap stuff. All they are really, and I think they're the only like... ones that do rods for this. So, oh, really? but we got no problem in sticking them in a motor of ours. Mm. They're really good, to be honest. There's a bit of a bit of a thing with com rods, isn't there? You've got yeah. to be a bit careful. Don't just go by price. Is my no. advice. Yeah, which a lot of people definitely do. Yeah, so that's all we're waiting for. Got the ductile iron liners here waiting. Oh, they're the new ones, isn't they? yeah. Yeah, got the bearings. Really the good. crank's all okay. So that's where we are with the rover. Got to balance that one, or? or uh, yeah, we've got to balance. I've got a knife edge yet. Oh, really? Once it knife edged. Well, that's one for the channel one then, isn't it? One for the channel, isn't it? See how I do that. Don't have to do that too often, do you? No, not very often, no. Basically, what we've got to do is stick it in the lathe and sort of turn it. Turn the webbing. Turn those. the webbing's at this sort of angle. What's this? That cosy head there, is that the other one? That's the other head one? to that engine. Oh, it's yeah. a, just a spare head that we've gone through, so that's all done. And then next thing, once I'm going to do that head today, and then it's crack on with this RS CBH. Yeah. yeah, got to ease a bit out of the bores, just clean it up, give it a lick of paint, service that... the head and get it all put together. Oh, it? we're doing the whole lot. Doing yeah. the whole lot, yeah. So, head's all back together, mate. On, talked up, timed up. Lovely job. Job done. The only thing we've got to do with this now is I've still yet to find a bolt and washer to go on the auxiliary shaft because it's a fine thread as opposed to the coarse uh, thread that right. on the cams. But yeah, cleaned all the oil galleries out, lapped the valves again, checked them, everything's good. Ideal. So that is almost all ready to go. Just got to do the rocker cover, which we'll get done Monday. Yep. Another cosy out the door. Perfect. Have a great weekend, guys. See you Monday.